Here we go, one more time. Everybody's doing okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hello. Welcome to So You Think You're Iconic, the podcast where we have to redo it because <laughs> the audio <laughs> sounds like Alvin and the Chipmunks on speed. <laughs> I mean, we could have just given you this that very special edition of it, but mm -hmm. we thought better. Everyone loves hearing voices that so much this <laughs> We post nothing but good content here. Quality content. Quality content. So quality, in fact, that I'm literally eating while <laughs> we're recording right now. <laughs> so, I, I have something to say. Okay. <laughs> Today has not been my day. I woke up this morning choking on smoke. I left, oh, my, yeah. I left my window open last night because it was hot. Oh no. And then I woke up this morning and I was like, I can't breathe. What the hell? <laughs> Somehow it got smoky overnight. For those of you who don't know that art in California, there's a fire going on in the Napa County. There's a fire constantly. Yeah. Well, Always. there's another fire in Napa County, which sucks for them. Mm -hmm. Her old school got evacuated. Yeah, my old college got evacuated. Don't know if it's going to survive or not, but... It has God's grace on its side. It'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, no, one of the elementary schools that was near it, it burned down. Eh, it'll be fine. Isn't that, isn't that like the second one that's burnt down in Napa? Uh, of the schools know. we know of? I don't Is know. Is there another one burned down? I only know of one of them so far. Okay. Well, let me get back into it. Um, so that <laughs> happened. And then I'm driving to work, and I pass by some train tracks, and literally, there was a fire right by the train tracks. No, are you serious? <laughs> and I was like, who started a fire by the train tracks? Oh, my gosh. And then I get to work, and I'm literally exhausted. Like, I was fine until I sat down at my desk, and then I was like, I don't feel like being here. <laughs> I mean, work will do that to you. I didn't really wake up this morning until like 10.30 when I went on my lunch. Dang. That's when I woke up this morning. Oh my gosh. And then, surprise, surprise, I get to work. Everything's going well. We get back from our break. All of a sudden, we have a test. Yay, surprise test. I was like, what the fuck? I wanted to quit right then and there. I was so mad. You should have kept a tally today of how many times you wanted to quit. Oh, if I had done that, I probably would have quit. <laughs> <laughs> you just so, start making the list. You're like, you know what? That's it. <laughs> you know what? This list is too long. Right. It's the, the fact that I have to make a list. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, that was my day. How has your day or week been? Um, I've been stuck in the house all day because it's being painted. And literally every window and door out to out of the house of it has been covered with plastic. And so I can't leave the house. <laughs> I can't I even wish, look outside. I wish I couldn't leave the house today. <laughs> and it's and it's hot, so hot in here. We can't. Oh, hot as hell. It oh yeah. Well, since so you're you guys on the on the closer to the ocean mm -hmm. <laughs> don't know this heat, but we do. No. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And then, like, I am not used to heat anymore. That's what happens when you go to school in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. You just don't do heat anymore. It's just cold there. It's cold all the time. Mm -hmm. Except all for, like, an odd week in, like, September and August where it kind of mm -hmm. gets hot. If, if the sun is out and it's a sunny day, you better believe our uh, quad is full of people. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Well, are you ready to talk about this movie again? Yeah, I'm so excited. I hopefully have some new jokes, so. I know. I'm trying to come up with new material as we keep go. It, keep it a little fresh. Keep it a little fresh. <laughs> so our movie starts off with our protagonist, Molly Bloom. She tells us about her life growing up in Colorado and how everything was perfect and how at 12 years old, her back exploded. 
She had like, rapid scoliosis. <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter, people. <laughs> she is 12. She's a child. She is a child. Well, yeah. And so she has a surgery. <laughs> and they're like, uh, you'll never be able to ski again. And then she's like, fuck that. And she's back on skis within the next year. That's basically a theme in this whole movie. Mm -hmm. Comes full circle at the end, you'll see. Mm -hmm. Just wait. And and so she's 20 at this point. And she goes on to the Olympic qualifiers and skiing. But right when she's doing her, her run, she crashes. Because... She hits a pine cone or a stick? Um, she hits a piece of pine tree that has frozen. Yeah, and it hits her shoe perfectly that it knocks her shoe off of her ski. Mm-hmm. And she goes flying in the air and crashes and lands on her digitally remodeled spine. Yes. Yeah. There, you know how everyone has those. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she and, survives like, you know, everyone else does. Yeah. Like her back, her back doesn't break. Yeah. Good for her. Good for her. <laughs> and so we then cut to years in the future where we meet an adult Molly. And she's woken up by a phone call by a couple of FBI agents. They, you have 30 seconds to step out of your apartment, house, whatever it may be. Um, and you are under arrest. Otherwise, we will break down your door. She mm-hmm. she sits there, and she doesn't go like, "What the fuck?" She's just like, "I haven't run a game in two years." <laughs> I know, like she was. She's honestly on the ball and just like starts like, "I I didn't do anything. I I didn't." She doesn't even think it's a prank or anything. I would have thought it was a prank. Right. She doesn't even question. She doesn't, like, look at the phone, maybe hang up and just go back to sleep. Mm-hmm. I would have been like, fuck you. But no. Someone's get, got a guilty conscience. She gets up pretty much immediately, mm-hmm. w- walks into her hallway, and they've already broken down her door, even though <laughs> it's been less than 30 seconds. Yes. They're waiting there. She says about 17 of them, pointing guns and flashlights at her face. Mm. And then she's put under arrest for running an illegal gambling operation. Yep. And so we go back in time to a year after her Olympic trial crash, and Molly moves to L.A. And the book has a different reasoning of why she moved to L.A. than the movie. In the movie, she says it's because she wants to feel the sun on her skin or whatever. Whatever. Live life. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, those live, love, laugh, whatever posters, that's her. That is her. But not in the book. In the book, she does it because a boyfriend introduced her to L.A. That's why most girls are in L.A. Yeah. (laughs) And she shows up in the movie in L.A. with $1,700. 17 you know. A fortune. I mean, (laughs) she might as well buy a mansion. I know. Why did she sleep on her friend's couch? I know. Why didn't she immediately just go up and find like a seven room, six bathroom house and move in? She could have afforded it. She I could mean, have. $1,700? Girl, she's set for life. Live in large. Mm. And so she gets a job working at a club because apparently that wasn't enough for her. Wow. Wow. Rich people problems. I know. Can't relate. <laughs> and then she tells the audience how the club would make her make people spend more money than they needed Mm -hmm. and there's one scene where she's bartending not bartending she's waitressing or whatever inside the club Mm -hmm. and a guy says he wants a specific brand of vodka and then she looks at him and she's like you look like you need a bottle of gray goose and he's like sure whatever and then in voiceover she says he just spent nine (laughs) hundred dollars (laughs) no Grey no. Goose. Grey Goose does <laughs> not cost anywhere near nine hundred dollars. <laughs> I looked it up. You could get a giant one point seven five liter bottle bottle of Grey Goose for sixty dollars. A markup of over a thousand percent. We love to see price gouging. L.A. people are stupid. 
In yes. what world are you paying nine hundred dollars for a bottle of Grey Goose? Probably watered down Grey Goose. Also, how did that person who gets the Grey Goose not like come back later at like a later date with his receipt and be like nine hundred dollars? Same. I would have been like, "What the fuck is this?" So yeah, I remember getting one <laughs> bottle of Grey Goose, not like not fifty. Twenty. <laughs> <laughs> well. The, even that wasn't enough money for her. Mm-mm. So selfish. So she got another job <laughs> working as an assistant for a real estate mogul named Dean Keith. And he yells at her all the time. There is one scene where he yells at her because he got because she got poor people bagels. He's which very is, particular about his bagels. Yeah, which is dumb. All bagels. Bagel, bagels are, the are same. bagels. They're all the yeah. same. They're all made out of the same type of flour. Right. It doesn't matter if you paid a dollar or you paid five dollars for it. It's a bagel. Mm -hmm. And if you're hungry enough, you're going to eat it. Exactly. So he introduces her to his poker game that he runs every Tuesday night at the Cobra Lounge Mm -hmm. with a $10,000 buy-in. So she, you know, the sophisticated woman she is, decides she will bring a cheese platter from Safeway. And bartend herself. And bartend herself. Also, she made a music playlist with out of one, with with one what, song. What, Kenny G song? What, yeah, yeah, something like that. She just oozes class. So much class. <laughs> also, disclaimer, neither of us know a lot about poker. Oh, I know absolutely nothing. So a lot I've of the played things were once we're in my play. life. Yeah. And it was at on, my, on my senior trip. <laughs> yep, that's it. It was one with time. Other, with other people who didn't know how to play. <laughs> <laughs> there was one person that probably kind of knew how to play poker, and then the rest of us were like... We were like, what? these these look pretty together. <laughs> right, like, I have a pair, and I've got, like, a king. Is that cool? Like, right, is that, is a, that a good... <laughs> we all had Google next to us. Yeah. We didn't know how to play. It was a very slow game of poker. Yes, but this game of poker had people who knew how to play. Mm -hmm. There were movie stars, directors, music stars, and other people of importance. Mm -hmm. And so while she's watching them play, she's using this time to uh, Google the terms, find out how to play, you know, stuff we should have done for research, but we didn't. (laughs) but we did not. And nobody got time for that. Mm -mm. And so we move forward in time to present day Molly sitting in a lawyer's office, and we meet Charlie Gaffey, Mm -hmm. played by Idris Elba. He initially doesn't want to work with her. He's like, I don't trust you. I don't like you. You don't have the money. Yeah. I have a $250,000 retainer, which is ridiculous. Ooh. And she was like, no, no, no. I can pay you. And I was like, girl, that's just his retainer. I know. That's like, just that's, the starting fee. That's the starting fee. That's not even doing billable hours or any right. of that. Like, you could just get him for just right now and that's yeah that's what that's pretty much what a retainer is yeah for him to look over your case yep it's an initial meeting two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and so he doesn't want to work with her and he tells her and then he's talking to her he's like when's the last time you slept and she was like it's been a couple of days he was like okay i'll come to your indictment yeah he's like we'll go over the indictment and then i'll come to your the reading and then that's it You know, because you haven't slept in a few days. Yeah, I'm feeling generous. Mm -hmm. And so then we go back in time to her childhood. And this is where we learn about her father. Her father is a psychiatrist? He's a therapist. Or a therapist. Cool. Whatever. He's not a good one. (laughs) And so he wants his children to be perfect at everything they do, especially academics and sports. Mm hmm. There is a scene where she's obviously tired and has been skiing for literally hours. And, yes. then, she, and then the mom, rightfully so, is like, let's go home. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, do you want to go home, Molly? And she's like, yes. He's like, okay, give me a synonym for uh, tired. And she was like, weak. Yes, weak. It pissed me off so much. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, everyone right. gets tired. <laughs> right. Like- and she's like 10. Let her go home and drink some hot chocolate. Right. Like, I get pushing your kid to do better, but come on now. Playing psychological games with her already. The moral of the story is don't date a psychiatrist or a therapist. Therapist. (laughs) 
Maybe psychiatrist too. We don't know. Then we jump ahead to Molly. She's now running the card games and we're introduced to player X. Yes. And player X is a big movie star. Cough, cough. (laughs) (laughs) Who's played by uh, um, Michael Sarah. Scott Pilgrim. (laughs) Scott Pilgrim. That's the only name that popped into my mind. And since they called him player X in my mind, he's still Scott Pilgrim. And Molly is doing this while she is still the assistant to Dean. And so she has to make sure that everyone at the table is happy, especially uh, player X. Mm -hmm. And she's constantly moving back her law school start date. Because she was initially only coming to LA for a year, for a year off. Mm -hmm. And then she was going to go to law school. Yeah. And she's maybe still waitressing. We don't know. It's never mentioned again. It's never mentioned. And so we move to present day. And it's Molly's arraignment. And Charlie keeps playing mind games with Molly. He keeps switching seats with this random man who may or may not be her lawyer or her bodyguard. Mm-hmm. We'll never know. And he's and he keeps asking her questions that he should have asked her ahead of time. Yeah. Like, homie had a meeting with her to read the indictment. And then the hours before the actual reading of the indictment. What was yeah. he doing? He had, a, he had a multitude of reasons why he should have been more prepared. Yeah, maybe he's not a good lawyer. And then, and then he asked her one final question. He's like, how come you didn't sell your debt sheet to someone? And then she just says, I, don't, I didn't know how they would collect. Meaning she didn't know whether or not they would have muscle behind them to collect their money. And so he's like, oh, I trust you now. And so he's like, <laughs> I'm your lawyer. Yeah. Like, right on the spot, they've, like, the judge has been asking if she is ready for the meeting. And this whole time... like, a good two minutes. Yeah. The whole time, Molly and Charlie are having this private conversation. (laughs) They probably cost the legal system, like, a good $20,000 just sitting there. Oh, yeah. And so, we go back to Molly's game. She's Mm -hmm. in about her third year of running the game, and she's still working for Dean. And one night, Dean has been losing, because, you know, losers lose. Yeah, and then they get uh, uh, bitchy about it. Mm -hmm. Because Dean goes up to her, and he's like, I'm not paying you to be my assistant anymore. Because apparently she makes too much in tips from the other players. From doing her second job, maybe third, we don't know. Is she still still, uh, working at the club? Who knows? Yeah, she's still price gouging alcohol, I don't know. And so she's like, fuck that. And so she makes plans to start her own game at the Four Seasons every Tuesday night on his night. She's stealing his game. Yep. And she's upping up the class by serving not a cheese platter, cheese platter from like a mm-hmm. Safeway or something. She does Chinese food. Chinese food from Mr. Chow's, mm-hmm. which is apparently famous for some reason. Yeah. Because she mentions it <laughs> multiple times. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. And she also gets a proper uh, bartender. A proper bartender, like she she steps up her game this time. Yeah. And so she also goes to visit a lawyer, who tells her how to run her game without breaking the law. Kind of. <laughs> kind of. She constantly says, "Don't break the law while you're breaking the law." Yeah, and then she keeps pressing. She's like, "Am I breaking the law?" Yeah, she's like, are there laws written down that I can read or like a book somewhere to see if I am breaking the law? We never find out. Yeah, we never find <laughs> out, but he just keeps sending her in circles about not breaking the law. Yeah, he's, he just stresses. He's like, no drugs, no prostitution, yeah. and you can't take a percentage of the game. And so that's what she does. She incorporates, she pays taxes, she uh, has employees. And she doesn't take a percentage of the game. She only gets paid by tips. And then one night, player X comes up to her. And he's like, I want to raise the stakes. I want the buy-in of the game to be $500,000. And so she's like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, um, the people who normally play can't afford that. So she has to go recruiting. Mm-hmm. She finds professional player Donnie Silverman. She finds Brad Marion. Also known Bad as Bad Brad. Brad, also known as Shrek from Shrek the Musical. <laughs> <laughs> Check that out on Netflix. Yes. And then there's Harlan Eustick, 
who is a low budget prank video director. I think he makes porn and they didn't want to say that. I mean, how else is he taking part in these games? Because <laughs> he does not look like he has any money. I don't. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Unless it comes to his wife's birthday parties and then he. <laughs> and then he has money. Or for poker. Or for <laughs> <laughs> the two important things in his life. Yep. Sex and poker. (laughs) So we cut back to the present, and Molly and Charlie are going over a game plan to keep Molly out of prison. Mm -hmm. Charlie wants her to give her his, whoa, him, (laughs) her hard drives that contain cell phone messages, um, spreadsheets on games, and overall Mm -hmm. dirt on the players. Yeah. She's like, "Uh, yeah, I'm not doing that. Yeah. She, she she, She... She's very loyal to the players and their confidentiality. I would say some might say, but everyone would say she's way too loyal. Yeah, she's she's blindly loyal to mm-hmm. all of these people that she barely knows. Barely knows. Like, she, she meets them once a week. Yeah, for a, poker for a game, couple hours. And she thinks they're best friends. Yeah, like, and she knows all their secrets and she has to keep them no matter what. Mm-hmm. But my question is, why were they telling her all of their secrets? Right. Why, why did they feel that it was safe enough to tell her anything? She may have been uh, working with some of the richest men on earth, but she was also working with the dumbest because yeah. I would not go around telling random people that I owe money to all of my secrets. Right. Right. Sheesh. And she also had a a rule of sort that she wouldn't date or sleep with anyone yeah which in the book is not true are you serious i kind of like that she wasn't romantically or sexually involved with any of them i'm almost done with the book and she dated one guy from the table the lies yeah they keep lying in this movie i'm mad and so she's like i don't want to and he's like okay here's what we'll do here's my cell phone It has all of my other clients' information. You can keep it as insurance that I won't spill anything I see on these hard drives. You know how lawyers love to break their lawyer-client confidentiality. Yep. So he's going to break a law. So that she doesn't. So she doesn't. Because she was like, I'm going to smash those hard drives to pieces and throw them in the ocean. Mm Mm-hmm. And somehow that trick works on her. Mm -hmm. It works somehow. She's like, okay, I'll go get them. Yeah, she literally looks at the phone for a second, tosses it back, and she's like, I'll have those hard drives tomorrow. And it's like, oh. Oh, Okay. Okay, that's a change in tune. And so we go back to Molly and her game. And Harlan, you know, porn director, Mm -hmm. is constantly winning. One night he's playing against Bad Brad, who is a notorious bad player. Yeah. Bad Brad is literally just there for the company. Yes. He's he has there. no idea how to play poker. He doesn't know how to play at all. He's just there so that he can recruit new friends to put money into his hedge fund. Mm-hmm. And so one night he loses to Brad because he didn't know that bad Brad was a bad player. And so he gets bluffed. This causes Harlan to doubt himself and he begins to make mistakes and sends himself into a major debt of $1.2 million. Yes. And, like, during that whole time, it's not just that Tuesday night. It goes into Wednesday morning. Yes. Like, she, like Molly has to call other players and be like, hey, do you want to play a couple hours before you go to work? Because I've got a guy here. Just keeps racking up debt. Molly was a monster in this situation because Harlan obviously needed to be stopped and she half-heartedly tried to stop him yeah she just said maybe tonight's not your night and maybe yeah. you should go to your wife's birthday party that was tuesday night and he literally looks at her and says shut the fuck up give me five hundred thousand dollars yeah and she gives it to him and she gives it to him and whenever he comes back for more money she keeps giving it to him until he hits 1.2 million and then she's like may, may hey yeah. Hey, yeah. Harlot. <laughs> got, got a wild idea here. I got a wild idea here. Um, maybe you should stop. Yeah. Not not like 
seven hundred thousand dollars ago but right yeah. now yeah you should not stop. after like four losses <laughs> yeah and then he's like i don't have the money he's like i don't i don't have this money she's like it's it's fine we'll figure it out later which it's not fine Molly, because it you're is going, not who, who's gonna pay brad his money yes and so we find out seemingly the next day that player x has paid off brad's money and that this entire time he's been staking uh, Harlan, which yeah. I guess means that he gets a percentage of his wins. Yeah, we're assuming. Yeah. We don't know anything about poker. Yet again, we know nothing about poker. Yeah, which opens up the opportunity for cheating for player X. Yes. And Molly is like, you can't do that anymore. And that makes player X very upset because he is a baby. And so one night while she's driving to the game, she gets a call from player X saying that he quits the game. He's having the game at his house and she's fucked. Yep. Meaning that he has essentially stopped her game and her income. Yep. Leaves her standing out in the open road of LA, hyperventilating. With no job. No job. No new income and nowhere to go. Because remember, she only gets paid by tips. Yeah, she only gets paid by tips. And so then we go back to present day. Molly and Charlie are discussing her book. And he's like, what was the advance on your book? And she says, it was $35,000 because I named some names and not others. And then he sits there and he realizes she needs a role reduction. Yeah. You know, to get her less time in prison. Or no time. But she doesn't want to do this because she was running her games and she doesn't think that anyone else should have to suffer because of that. Because yet again, her her unwavering loyalty. Yeah. Like, in a sense, I understand why she doesn't want the minor role reduction because she's basically made two games from the ground and made millions of dollars from it. Like, that's a pretty good feat to do by yourself. But she already, but the, wrote, she already wrote the book. Yeah. She, doesn't, she doesn't need to say that in open court. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, she could keep that to herself and know that she was a leader of two po- very successful poker, like, rings. Multi-million dollar poker yeah. rings. On two separate sides of America. Like, come mm-hmm. on. And there's a book about it. She should have been like, yeah, you know what? You know, I was, I was a waitress. I was a damn good waitress. Made should have seen me. Made a damn good pina colada. <laughs> and I price gouged Grey Goose. <laughs> made a, made a $7,000 pina colada. <laughs> <laughs> made out of coconut water I found in my fridge. <laughs> <laughs> and 75 and, cent alcohol. Right. And all the olives were like three days old. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> and so Charlie's like, I'm going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. And so he does it anyway. It doesn't work, but he does it. (laughs) Yes. Because he doesn't think she will survive in prison. In prison. You know, because everyone will know her name. Yep. Know what what she's done. And, you know, it's full of drug dealers. And you know how terrible (laughs) those people are. Mm. You don't want to be associated with them. You did a white collar crime. You don't deserve to be with the drug dealers. They're the worst. Mm -hmm. And so we cut back to about two weeks since her LA game was closed by player X. And Molly picks herself up by her bootstraps and is like, I'm going to New York City. And so she gets there. She meets a group of Playboy bunnies. And she's like, Mm -hmm. we're going to start our own game. And these Playboy bunnies have other amazing qualities about them. Oh my gosh, their skills, they should be working for the government. (laughs) <laughs> One girl had connections to the Saudi royal family. Right, another, she knew their addresses. Yes, another girl knew how to do background checks better than the TSA. Mm-hmm. Even though I'm not sure the TSA is that great at background checks. Mm. <laughs> and wasn't another girl able to speak like five languages? Yeah, I think so. Like, like she was well connected and she could speak many languages. Like she just happened to find Playboy bunnies that like should have been working for the CIA. Right. Like they were like 
all these girls were like a group in the CIA and then they got rejected. So they're like, you know what? We're hot. Let's go become Playboy bunnies. Yeah. They were like, you're too hot to work for the government. <laughs> so go work for Hugh Hefner. Yeah. They're like, we have his phone number. It's fine. We'll give him a good word. <laughs> Make sure you bring some cleaning wipes for your room when you get there. <laughs> Don't use a black light. Just, yeah. Just don't, clean. Just don't. <laughs> just clean, okay? Here's some bleach. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so Molly's like, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start a rumor that I've been running a game for six months, and it works. It, yeah. It works. Hook, line, and sinker. Because by the like, end of that year, she has the biggest game in New York City. Yeah, which is insane. And because of all of this success... She starts taking drugs. Yeah. Initially, she says, to stay awake. Initially. And she takes literally every drug imaginable that doesn't need to be inserted into your arm by a needle. Yes. Eventually, she, she takes some pill form, then she starts snorting, and then yeah. she just puts them in her alcohol yeah. so there's no lag between taking it and when it actually kicks in. Right? She's like, I don't have time for it to even kick in. I need to get going. Right. She's like, sleep? Who is she? Where's my alcohol? She moves at the speed of the Energizer bunny. She (laughs) is constantly ready. (laughs) Yes. And then we're introduced to Cole, who is Steve from Stranger Things. Yay! He's a player in one of her games. And one night, Molly catches him cheating. Mm Mm-hmm. Along with him cheating, she realizes, because apparently she waits to the last second to realize everything, (laughs) that a lot of people owe her money. Yes, and And she she, is losing a lot more than what she's gaining. Yes. She has no muscle to collect. Mm -hmm. She's just taking people on their word. Yep. Which is not good when you're dealing with gambling addicts. No. And she has some, like, Around two million out on the streets. Two million out on the streets. Yeah. Yeah. Like homegirl spent money on custom chips, custom cards that have her initials on them, candles that have a specific scent that casinos say. Yeah, that makes you want to gamble more. That makes you want to, yeah. And then she has all of those Playboy buddies that she's playing, that she's paying. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, there is no way there is a scent that they pump through a casino to make you want to gamble more have you been inside of a casino they all just smell like tobacco yeah it's literally just that so are you telling me that the smell of a cigarette makes me want to gamble it just makes me want to gag (laughs) it makes me want to leave like the air is so heavy in there and it's just it just feels sticky too and you're like why is anybody in here like two years ago we went to circus circus in reno and literally, my mom wouldn't let us go downstairs. She was like, nope. <laughs> Dude, even we went on a cruise last year. And even Same. just the just the casino part of the of the cruise ship, like you're like halfway there on the floor and you could just smell it. Me and Kelly almost went on the same cruise. Yeah, we did. <laughs> we were so close. But my cousin wanted to go to the Bahamas instead. Yeah, I didn't want to go to Mexico with us. Yours was only like two days. Ours was like four. Yeah, well, you spent a lot of time at sea. Yeah. But like, I got blue water and you got green water. Oh, come on. (laughs) Okay, and so Molly's dealer suggests that she begins rigging the games. Mm -hmm. Also called raking. Raking. So that she doesn't extend credit. And one day the pile gets really high. I think it's like $3 million. And she's like, I can't pay that shit. (laughs) (laughs) She's like, if this person can't pay, I'm screwed. Yeah. They're they're literally, like, you see the pot grow and they're they're just throwing chips in it. They are literally just throwing money on the table like it's used tissues. They're like, ugh. When it gets to like the $2 million point, they're just throwing in bars. Yeah, like, bars that say ten thousand dollars on yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, and it's just growing bigger and bigger, and she's like, "Oh." Uh. And so she has her dealer take two percent. Was that what it was off the table? And, yeah, because she saw like she calculated two percent like that and took it off the table. 
in like two seconds. Like she like already had the number in her mind yeah. and just took it off. Yeah, I can't relate to that. But she only took off like three chips. She took out two. She can't. She always takes out two chips, and they're always the same color. And I don't know. But what that didn't those seem mean. like enough. Yeah, but it doesn't funny. seem like enough. I felt like she should have taken like a handful. Yeah, but whatever. Well, and so now she's running an illegal gambling operation. Yep. And so then we meet Douglas, my favorite character in the entire <laughs> movie. He's that guy from Bridesmaids, the Irish one. Yep. So he's and const- he makes the Irish. He plays the Irish card here too. Yeah, it's very racist because he's constantly drunk. Yeah. And he talks about his marriage, talks about wanting a better life. Mm-hmm. And then one night after he loses and can't pay. Molly asked him about this mysterious Brooklyn game that only Russian Jews are allowed to play in, but somehow he was able to play in. Yeah, the only Irishman that The only in. Irish person they let play. And so she's like, if you can bring me some players, I will cut your debt. Yes. And then so he's like, I don't know, Molly. I'm the only Irish person they let play. <laughs> <laughs> and and Molly, you're Irish too, so I don't know if they'll want to come here. Yeah, and Molly looks him dead in the face. He's like, "I'm not Irish," and he, and he is flabbergasted. Yeah, he is like, "What do you mean? Your name is Molly Bloom, right?" Which I kind of understand. That sounds kind of Irish. Yeah, and she's got the red hair. Yeah, like I, I could see it, but like he acts like his whole world has been turned upside yeah, down. Yeah, he is stuck on this. He is like, no. Molly, you are Irish. Yeah. I've had this happen to me while working retail. This random woman was like, what are you mixed with? And I was like, black and black. Like, <laughs> black. And she was like, no, That's no, no, no. You're mixed with something. And I was like, sure, lady. Whatever you want. <laughs> right. Get out of my line. Yeah. So I just, I just need you to take your stuff. I've already scanned it. Just, please. <laughs> yeah. Here's your receipt. Please leave. Right. Thanks. Do not come again. <laughs> and then I never, I never saw her again. Very good. Then we meet a whole bunch of Russian people, and I can't remember any of their names except for Shelly. Shelly is this tiny man, and he brought Molly a, mon- a Monet as collateral. An authentic Monet. A seven million dollar Monet. Yeah. Because he didn't have enough time to stop at the bank. Yeah. He literally just like, I woke up after the banks had closed, so I grabbed the closest thing, which was an authentic Monet, and I came straight here. He has an, auth- he has an authentic Monet in his house, but no yeah. cash. Yeah, no cash anywhere. That checks out. Yeah. And so Molly's like, hey, how about you just take this home? <laughs> <laughs> I-, I will extend you some credit. I can't take this. Yeah. Yeah, she is not going to be liable for that Monet. Yeah, she, she's like, you you have security at the door, right? He's like, yeah. And she's like, they're armed, right? She's like, he's like, yeah. She was like, oh, okay, y'all can all leave. Like, just just <laughs> yeah. come back. <laughs> yeah. Can't have guns out here. Right. And so then we move back to present day. Molly is back at Charlie's office, and she's looking at his law books, and she's like, ah, uh, probably reminiscing about what would have what her life would have been like if she had become a lawyer. And then Charlie comes in and he tells Molly he should that she should be a witness for the prosecutors. Yeah. But she and that he, her minor role reduction did not pan out. Yeah, because anyone with a mind would have known that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> I mean, she wrote a whole book. I know. She li- she literally tells everybody what she did. Literally, anytime anyone looks at her, she's like, "Hi, I'm Molly Bloom, the illegal." <laughs> The self-proclaimed poker princess. Yes. I don't think you've heard of me. Here's how much money I made. Here's how much I hid from the government. And here's all the people that I'm extremely loyal to. Yes. And so he's like, if you become a witness, I can get your um, sentence reduced. And she's like, I don't know anything about anything. It's like, I don't know anything about these Russian people. I don't know anything about these people. All I did was run a game. And I think she's lying. Yeah. She's a fat liar. Because she literally talks about how she knew everyone's business. How did you not know these Russian people were in the mob? 
Yeah, like earlier in the movie when she's still working the games at the Cobra Lounge, there is literal scenes of the guys talking about like their private life, things that they're investing, the invention like upcoming of, businesses. The invention of Twitter. Yeah, the invention of Twitter. They're literally mentioning everything and she's just sitting there at the listening. Pack, keeping tabs and listening. Like, come on, you knew something. You know damn well someone was sitting at that table. They got upset one night. It was like, damn, I should have my hit guy come and get you. Right. Or someone got upset about a deal that didn't go through with another mobster and said yeah. something. Come on now. Yeah, she was lying. Mm -hmm. And then so she talks about her childhood with Charlie. And she's like, I used to start fights with my dad all the time. Which at this point, I literally put this movie is literally about her daddy issues. It is. It is. That's, yeah, that pushes her to be the best at everything. She has major daddy issues. Yeah. If you she, wanted a theme for this movie, that's what it is. She should just have done what most girls did and just dated someone older. Yeah. And then had a couple kids, had a nice relationship. And, and then get divorced by 40 because yeah. she realized that her husband only liked her when she was young. Yeah. And then she will date then an extremely young guy. Exactly. And then... The tables will just keep a turn. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and so we go back to Molly's game. And one day, Bad Brad is arrested because his mysterious head fudge was really a Ponzi scheme. And so he goes to the FBI and he's all like, I know I did this legal thing, but it was only because I was introduced to Molly and she yeah. got me addicted to, to poker. poker. And so her game is in her L.A. game mm -hmm. is investigated. Yeah. I guess it checks out because she doesn't get arrested. But she does have to pay restitution to the mm -hmm. Ponzi scheme victims. Yeah, it, was, which, it was either that or testify against everyone in open court. And we all know she's loyal to death. And so mm -hmm. she wasn't going to do that. So she chooses to pay $500,000. Like in it's cash. like it's like paying two dollars for a bridge toll. Like she's like, right. oh, that's it. Okay, right. she's she's reaching in her bag for like a million, and they're like five hundred thousand. She's like, oh, puts it back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it. So that's all y'all wanted. It's like, dang, I have like a pair of shoes that cost that much money. Right, right. It's like maybe two sets of my gloves, and like that's it. And so after this happens. Molly begins to run herself too thin. Mm -hmm. She has a busy schedule. She has multiple games happening every night, including the day. Yeah. She, uh, her drug use is becoming worse. Yeah, she's constantly on something. She, ju she literally just needs a shower, some sleep, and water. Because oh they gosh, never she needs, show her she drink water. She never drinks water. They all, she always has a drink in her hand and it's never yeah. water. It's not water. Like she is an alcoholic's alcoholic. Like she, yeah. the fact that her liver still works to this day is amazing. Yeah. She literally needed an AA meeting and a therapist. How was she not constantly hungover? Oh, yeah. probably because she wasn't drinking anything else but alcohol. I guess you can't get a hangover right. if you don't stop drinking. Right. And you can't have side effects from the drugs if you're not t if you're constantly taking them mm -hmm. so she she wasn't gonna let withdrawal slow her down mm -mm, mm -mm. she said i must <laughs> step ahead y'all <laughs> you can't <laughs> you can't crave drugs if you're constantly taking them <laughs> <laughs> you'll never be thirsty if you're constantly drinking <laughs> uh we're terrible people <laughs> so Ooh. one night Molly is counting her cash and Douglas comes up to her and he tells her that he loves her. Mm -hmm. And it was at this point in the movie where I really related with Douglas. When I drink, <laughs> I love people too. I felt sorry <laughs> for Douglas. He was just a little tipsy and he just wanted a hug. Like, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> he just needed another human being. Put a, put a margarita... Yeah. Put a margarita in me and I'm ready to go. Like, give me a hug, give me a kiss. Right. And right. normally, I don't like touching people. 
get some alcohol into me and then I'm just I'm everyone's best friend. Everyone's best friend. I'm and willing every, to and everyone's worst anything. nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, when I drink, I can't walk. Just, just so you know, I run into things. I see people who aren't there. It's like I'm possessed. Jeez. Oh, oh, <laughs> well, enough about my um, unhealthy drinking. Let's go <laughs> into Molly's driver slash security guard. Mm-hmm. One night, he picks her up. He's like, "Hey, I have some people who want to meet with you." And so she agrees to meet with them. They show up, order their apple martinis. Apple teeny. And they're like, Very classy. They're like, we know you have $2 million on the street. Let us be your collectors. Let us be your muscle. Yeah. And she's like, uh, no, I'm fine. Even though at this point, she's already doing illegal shit. So she yeah. might as well yeah. have muscle. Right. Like, you don't need, you could, you could rake. And you could get people hustling for the right. money that's out there. Right. You do one illegal thing, you might as well do might two. As well, right. <laughs> but you've already broken the law. Just right. Just what's ex- stopping you from going just, back? Yeah. Just extend your breaking. Like it's yeah. fine. Right. Right. Just open another door and then go through it and open another one. Eventually, you'll get into a hallway. You'll be. Yeah. You'll be good. Because I mean, you're already <laughs> addicted to drugs and you've got alcoholism. You right. already pushed through all the doors there. So <laughs> what's one more? What's one more? And so she refuses. She's like, no, nah, I'm good. And so a few nights later, a man comes into her apartment, beats her, robs her, and tells her that they were not asking to work yeah. with her. They were telling. And that this was a message. It, yeah, it was a message. It he, was a message. And then she voluntarily told him where all of her money was. Well, not all of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, not all of not it. Not all of it. But Just like the he, ones that were in the safe. Like he comes in, starts beating her, and immediately she's like, "The money's in the closet." Yeah. It's, it's really? like you don't you don't even know what he was beating you up for. <laughs> right. Like maybe he just wanted to rough you up a little bit and leave. But no. <laughs> right. But now you just <laughs> offered him like, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. She's like, "There's a safe. And there's there's money in it." And he's like, "Oh." I let's let's go get that right he was like okay wh- where is it right. <laughs> and then she pulls out all the cash she had in there mm-hmm. and she had these heavy gold bars which mm-hmm. by the way a gold bar is worth one thousand six hundred and fifty dollars per ounce mm. and these and babies were huge they looked like the size of a newborn baby they yeah. were some big gold bars then she had some jewelry in there too Mm-hmm. But at that point, what's the jewelry compared to the gold bars? Exactly. Oh, I didn't mention. I just got to a part in the book mm-hmm. where the bank she was banking at, yeah. they told her she couldn't bank there anymore because of her business. Have you ever heard of a bank not wanting to work with an illegal business? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's how she knew she should have quit when the bank didn't want to work with her. Right. Like, (laughs) if the bank is telling you that they don't want to work with you, that should have been an Mm eye-opener. You're either too poor or you have too much uh, going on. (laughs) Yeah. Like, even they're like, you know what? If I'm associated with you, I could go down. And banks never go down. They never go down. Look at Wells Fargo. (laughs) (laughs) Just saying. And also during this scene, my mom walked in (laughs) and she was like, why did she let that fat old man beat her up? Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I was like, mom, he has a gun. Well, like he is just, he's a big man. He was a huge man. But like not like muscular huge. He was like. He's not muscular. I need to take a break halfway up the steps, huge kind of guy. Yeah, like literally she could have just kicked him in the nuts, maybe throw an elbow in his face and ran out of her apartment. And her apartment was essentially bare. Yeah. She had like nothing to like hit him over the head with or anything near the door. No, she just had like a couple of couches and then everything in her closet and that's Mm -hmm. it. You would think with someone who's constantly walking around with hundreds of millions of dollars, you would have some sort of protection. Yeah. 
Like she only has her driver and that's it. Right. She never took a Tybo class, she didn't right. have a gun. Didn't buy one of those cute little like kitty keychains that when you put it on your hand it forms little horns and oh, you yeah. get people. Or or even pepper spray. Nothing. Not even a bat near the door. Come on uh, now. She could afford one. She could afford a bat. And so after this terrible incident, she finally comes to her senses. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I'm going to do one more week of games, just enough to get enough to live the rest of my life, even though she already had $4 million in her bank account. Right. And however much money was in her closet. Yeah. And so she does that. And then one night she's getting ready to go to a game and Douglas calls her. He's pretty much incoherent. He's like, I'm on the floor. I'm in the bathroom. (laughs) same uh, <laughs> and then she's and then he says that he was cited for securities fraud and yeah. she's like no because i do background checks i would have known that and her tsa girl didn't catch you no know, you know how the tsa is constantly catching criminals mm-hmm. all the time and so she's like no i would have seen that and he was like no i'm working as an informant and immediately she throws down everything <laughs> and starts packing her bags. Yeah. And she runs to her mother's house, which same. <laughs> Honestly, though, nowhere else to go. We're going to mom's house. <laughs> we're, we're going to my mom's house. <laughs> and then we jump back to present day. And she and Charlie are having a meeting with some government prosecutors where she is yet again being told she needs to take the stand. Mm-hmm. And then there is a scene where Charlie stands up for her, and I understood nothing of what was happening because <laughs> his accent kept moving through American and British like a hot knife through butter. Yeah. <laughs> I literally cannot tell you one word he said. I was just flabbergasted at the fact that I was like, whoa, what's happening here? <laughs> I think the only reason why I could understand was because I had subtitles on. Because <laughs> I, I would like look away and be like, wait. And then I have to rewind a little bit and then like look at the subtitles and be like, oh, okay. Good for you. I should have thought of that. I mean, I watched this movie twice, so maybe I should have well, thought some about of the, really that. Some of the audio, like during the phone calls, was just so low that I was like, I, I have no idea. And I had like my volume on my laptop all the way up. I'm like, no. Surprise, surprise, Kelly's smarter than me. (laughs) (laughs) And so after his speech, he's like, I'm going to talk to these people alone. They're idiots. I'll I'll get you out of this. Mm -hmm. And so she's like, okay. And so she goes walking around New York City and she's hungry. And so she stops at one of the food carts that are on the street, which don't eat from those. (laughs) And so she's like, "Uh, I want a hot dog. But she doesn't have enough money for a hot dog. She only, has, she only has $2. Yeah. So she only can get a pretzel. Which, as a bro college student, I relate. I mean, I would have had enough money for a hot dog. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I've been down before, but I've never been, I've I'm been gonna down. I'm going to have to switch my order to something cheaper. I've come back from LA with $5 in my bank account, but Ooh. at least I could have afforded a hot dog. Right. Come on now. And so she's walking around with her thing, her pretzel, and then she sees ice skating rings. She's like, I'm going to go ice skating, even though I have no money. Yeah. And so she goes up to the girl and she's like, hi, I need a size seven and I have no money. (laughs) (laughs) She's like, but I have these $700 gloves and takes them off. And I'm looking at them and I'm like, those look like any gloves. Yeah, like she literally says these are $700 gloves, but they do the job of like a $10 pair of gloves, so. She was not lying. They didn't look any special to me. Yeah, yeah. And so the girl just takes them she takes as payment them. Right. and gives her the skates. <laughs> she actually believed her. Yeah, she literally could have been scamming her. They could have literally been the, the $10 gloves. They could have been $1 gloves. Yeah. Like, who knows? Who knows? And so she starts skating, and then she has a mental breakdown. Yeah. She just starts, like, going super fast around the ice rink for absolutely no reason. Mm-hmm. 
and whenever and the security that try to chase her down and make her stop just like egg her on and she just like yeah. gets faster and faster she's like chase me yeah <laughs> He's like, ma'am, please. Yeah, there's there's like, children on the right, ice. <laughs> right. And People then she, are going to get hurt. Yeah, and then she looks over, and her father is there. Miraculously. He found her in the city of, like, five million people. Mm-hmm. After not being in contact with her for mm-hmm. a very long time. So she trips over someone, obviously. Mm-hmm. And then she gets kicked off the ice. And so she goes to talk to her father. Bad idea. Bad idea. Don't ever talk to your father, people. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when they're the reason for your daddy issues. Yeah. Come on. Go talk to another therapist yes. and then talk yes. to your father. And so her father sits down. He's like, I'm going to give you three years of therapy in three minutes. Three minutes, which a good therapist <laughs> would know not to do. Right. Because you're opening up so many cans of worms and so many emotions. Yeah, the point of therapy is not to tell people what's wrong. It's to help them to realize themselves what is wrong. and then help them cope with it in a healthy way. Not be like, hey, this, this, and this is wrong. And then they're going to feel like crap. And then you're like, okay, bye. Yeah, how did did this man get his license? Right. And so he tells her she's addicted to having power over powerful men. That's the first thing he tells her. Yes. And then she's like, why did you like my brothers better than me? And then he lies and says, no, I didn't like them more than you. It just appeared that I liked them more than Mm. you, which is like, that's kind of redundant, sir. Yes. (laughs) We we just said the same thing. Yeah. (laughs) You just tried to reword it. Right. You just made it sound better by using redundant right you're gaslighting me you're gaslighting me right this is why she has daddy issues though and then she asked the question of all questions she was like do you think you're a good father and he's like yeah (laughs) (laughs) he literally says yes and goes on to say that her two other brothers are like super successful yeah. And that even though she broke a bunch of laws, she had made two successful gambling rings mm-hmm. worth billions or millions of dollars. And he's proud of her. Yeah, that seems like someone who grew yeah. up in a stable household. <laughs> yeah, he technically counts that as a win. <laughs> Which, by the way, you can't count your children's wins as your own. They yeah. are not a, and they are not an extension of yourself. Mm-mm. No, you just set them up, and then they do it with their thing, and then they yeah. get their own success. Oh, this man! Yeah. This man needs a therapist of his own. Oof, yes. And then he tells her he was harder on her because he knew that she knew that he cheated on her father. Whoa, mother! <laughs> 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 Guys, I'm tired. That's, uh, a, that's a different movie. <laughs> that's a different movie. <laughs> that's a different story. Uh, and so she's like, no, I didn't know until I was 20. And then he sits here and was like, no, you knew when you were five. And, and she's gives like, no explanation. No explanation. She's like, what? <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah. When you were five, you saw me in the car with a woman. But you don't know what happened. Yeah. Which means that she did not know what happened. <laughs> yeah. So she, and neither do we. <laughs> he literally could have just been talking to a student. We don't right. know. Right. Or he could have been taking, like, met a neighbor out and been like, oh, my car is broke down. Let me take you home. Yeah. It could have been anything. Could have been anything. But then she, she, he's doing a very good job of gaslighting her because she believes him. Mm-hmm. And then he does the one thing that truly pissed me off. He sits there and he's all like, and I had to learn from my daughter's book that she was beaten up by a mob guy. And I was like, yeah, I wouldn't have told you shit either. I don't like you. Right. Yeah, out of the year word right there. He's like, the, 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 the telephone goes two ways, sir. Right. You, you could have called me. Right. Like, he read this book. And didn't think immediately, oh my gosh, I gotta call my daughter. 
he thought, no, the next time I see her, Today. whenever that is. <laughs> if we ever see each other if we again, ever see I'll each bring other it again. up. Yeah, and then I'm going to be upset that I wasn't there. And so they have this really touching moment and they hug. And then Molly goes back to Charlie's office and Charlie's sitting there. And he's like, you know what? My daughter made me read your book and she sees you as a role model. And I was like, hold the phone. (laughs) In what way is a drug and alcohol addicted, illegal gambling uh, operator a role model? Yeah. Like, is it because of her business acumen? Because even that wasn't a strong business move. No, it wasn't. So I'm confused. I was yeah. like, good, I was like, good for you. You did make millions of dollars, but like, right? Like you were successful in a way. In a way. In a way, but is that something to be celebrated by other people and looked up to? It most definitely is not. No. And so then he's like. I have a proposition for you. He's like, if we hand over your hard drives, the government agrees to give you all of your money back plus interest Mm -hmm. and you'll get uh, complete immunity. Yeah. And she's like, I can't do that. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. (laughs) Dumbest move the whole movie. I was like, that is the deal of all deals. Like they're, they're willing to look over all the illegal stuff you did. And give you back your money. And all you have to do is hand over some hard drives that have a few gossip pieces in them. Right. To the people that you barely know yeah. and that will never back you up. And she's like, this will ruin lives. I was like, your life was ruined. Yeah. No one, no one seems to care that your life was ruined. Yeah. Why do you care that theirs? Right. And then she's like, I don't want to tarnish. They their own lives anyway. Yeah. Like, who cares? They already did what they did. Like, there's yeah. nothing. And she's like, yeah. I don't want to tarnish my name and my reputation. <laughs> I'm like, your yeah. name and your reputation are already tarnished. Yeah. And she goes on to, to to make this really obscure reference to the beginning of the movie about the crucible and that the only thing she has left is her name. Mm-hmm. We did not read the crucible, so we, did we didn't get it. Yeah. And we will not read the crucible. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I'm sure 80% of the people watching did not. So mm-hmm. all of that went over our heads. I only we only found out that it was a crucible reference because he said yeah, you read, read the, the crucible. crucible. Yeah. Like also she published a book with her real name in it. Mm-hmm. She dragged herself. Yeah, and I'm li- I'm almost done with the book. She yeah. She she's naming names, she's telling mm-hmm. business. I don't understand why she was like not everyone. And so she's like, I'm going to plead guilty. And then that's when I realized I was sitting there and like the light bulb moment happened. I was like, I know why she's doing this. She doesn't care about people's reputations. No. It's because she doesn't want the mob to kill her family. Because if she's under oath, she'll have to answer questions about the mob. Yeah. And she doesn't want to lie and get caught Mm -hmm. or to tell the truth. And then the mob kills her and her entire family. Yeah, because the guy who beat her up the first time, he, he, like, made a point of saying he knew where her mother lived. Mm-hmm. Like, she knows the threat. <laughs> and, she, and she tried to lie, and that was so funny. She was like, she doesn't live there anymore. Yeah. He, and he was like, really, Molly? <laughs> yeah, he's like, girl, like, come on. So, yeah, she just didn't want the mob to kill her family. No. Which, and, I mean, I, that's the only sensible move. That it's the made. only, yes. And so we go to court. Molly has asked more questions than I was when I was baptized. And then she pleads guilty. The yes. judge the judge is very nice to her. Very Sent- nice. Very nice. And sentences her to community service, probation, drug testing, and a two hundred thousand dollar fine. She spent Which, more than that on the Ponzi scheme restitution. Right. Which is a very lenient yes. thing. And then the movie ends with the crash scene from the beginning of the movie. Mm -hmm. And then she picks herself up from her crash, even though she was out cold two seconds before. Right. 
and gets up, which if I was the medical professional that was there, I'd be like, uh, no, honey. Right? Like, you cannot stand up. What are you doing? I was a lifeguard, and we weren't allowed to let people stand up if they landed on their heads. Right. Like, if you fall, you, like, even, like, I know, you don't move anybody's head or neck. Yes. Because something could be broken, and you don't know. She could have crippled herself. Yeah. She already has a bad back. (laughs) Right? Oh, whatever. And then she states in voiceover that she's very hard to kill. (sighs) Which I I have a problem with. (laughs) Tell us why, Kelly. She she was only threatened and her own, and like her life was only in danger once. Exactly. Maybe twice from that accident, but that's it. Oh, and the surgery. Yeah, and the surgery. Okay, so maybe three. But like how many people, how many people die from back surgery? I, I have no idea, but maybe because it's her, it could have happened, and she, she, she's too hard to kill. Yeah. So, do you think this movie is iconic? Um, I mean, I don't think so, because mm-hmm. I feel like, I know this is a, truth, a true story, but I feel like it's not as exciting as I thought it would be, you know? Like, there's mm-hmm. not as much drama or, or like things going wrong like she it's very she like says things very to the point and that's it like there's no twist and turn and I'm just like okay this is this is a good movie but I'm like eh, I don't know if it's iconic I think it's iconic solely for the fact that it's a true story if this was just a made-up story about a girl who ran a poker operation I'm like eh, it's okay <laughs> but the fact that it truly happened yeah is what gets me and I mean, you know more than I do because you're listening to the book too. Mm-hmm. So the, sto- the story has a lot more things apparently because you said she's actually dating somebody from the, or she dated somebody mm-hmm. from one of the gambling rings that she yeah. did. Own- His family owns the Dodgers. What? Mm-hmm. What? Like I'm not a Dodger fan, but. No one is. <laughs> <laughs> Giants for life. Okay. Uh, so are you ready for the movie fact? Yes. Okay. Uh, the fall from the beginning of the movie did not happen. What? It's not mentioned in the book at all. <laughs> like, I'm almost done with the book, and it still has not been mentioned. Did she even ski? I, I'm sure she did. Okay. Okay. Because yeah. why, why would you put that in the movie? That's so dramatic. Yeah. The reason why she didn't go to the Olympics is because she quit. She, it, it had nothing to do with a fall. Yeah, they, no. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, Molly Bloom wanted Jessica Chastain to play her. It was her first choice. Oof. There could have been some better choices there. Yeah. Yeah. Jessica Chastain is a very good actress, but she's kind of one note. <laughs> she does not have the range, darling. She does not have the range. <laughs> And then my favorite movie fact. Okay. Every, everyone get ready. All right. Player X is Tobey Maguire. <laughs> the, 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 big, the big movie star. The big movie star that made a whole big deal about himself in the poker game, guys. It Tobey. wasn't Brad Pitt. It wasn't Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> it was Tobey Maguire. The best Spider-Man actor, Tobey Maguire. Ooh, and you want to know a story from the book? Yeah. That should have been in the movie? Yeah. Um, one night, he had lost. Mm-hmm. And he was pissed, because apparently he gets pissy when he loses. <laughs> um, so he went up to tip her. Mm-hmm. He was, like, reaching out with a $1,000 poker chip. Mm-hmm. And then when she went to take it he dragged it back and he was like if you want this you have to clap and bark like a seal are you serious Mm -hmm. wow did she actually do it no okay would you have done it hell no (laughs) what the no that that is not not worth a thousand dollars plus at this point there were people tipping her like ten thousand dollars i'm not gonna bark like a seal for a thousand Right, shove those pieces up your ass, dude. Go home. Like, and I just want to know, what made this tiny man think he had the clout 
to be doing all this reckless stuff. This man only had Spider-Man going for him. I literally can't think of another Tobey Maguire movie other than The Great Gatsby. And that happened like, what, seven years after Spider-Man ended? Right. It happened a long time after. And he wasn't even the star of the movie. Yeah, he was a side character. So, yeah, Tobey Maguire can suck a dick. Many, in fact. Many. And choke on them. Yeah, because that's what he deserves. It's completely what he deserves. (laughs) Do you have any recommendations for this week? I do. My recommendation is Enola Holmes. It's on Netflix. I watched it Saturday. Go check it out. Mm, It's very good. What about Um, you? I have a couple. Okay. Everyone knows Lock and Key. Lock and Key, y'all. Get into it. And then Archer season 11. It started a couple weeks ago. Everyone watch Archer. It's on Hulu. All 11 seasons. It's very funny. It's the same guy who does Bob's Burgers. And Bob's Burgers is really good. And if you haven't watched that, do that too. They literally do an episode on Archer where they make fun of Bob's Burgers. It's oh amazing. And my last recommendation. I need everyone on November 3rd or before, you know, before. Whenever, you, whenever you get your ballot, yeah, go vote. Do it. Not just for the president. Vote in your local and state. Everything. Get everything. Because it affects you, too. It does. Look everything up. Don't just watch the commercials and be like, okay, look it up. Do your research. It makes a difference. It truly makes a difference. And don't think your vote doesn't count because that's what rich people want you to think. Exactly. And we all know we've all paid more in taxes than Trump. Oh, I I paid more in taxes than our president. Let that sink in. A multi-millionaire, I paid Mm -hmm. more in taxes than he has. So uh, do your part. (laughs) Please. Because he's not. (laughs) You know that pothole in front of your house? You wonder why it's there? He didn't pay his taxes. Exactly. So thank you guys for listening. Don't forget to follow us on our social media of Twitter and Instagram at S-Y-T-Y-I podcast. And you can send us some movie recommendations or your movie stories. Like yes. that, like the time the popcorn machine blew up at your movie theater. Yep. At s y t y i podcast at gmail dot com, and also don't forget to share us with your friends and your family. Yeah. And rate us and review us on Apple Podcasts. We love to hear you guys. I mean, you hear us all the time, so. Yeah. Tell us how we're doing. Yeah. Tell us how much we suck. But still give us a (laughs) five-star rating. (laughs) Tell us we suck, but in a nice way. Yeah. In the comment, put, Jordan's not funny. Yeah. But. But. I'm going to listen anyway. Yeah. And then give us five stars. Mm -hmm. Not four. we deserve it anyway. We deserve five. Mm -hmm. What would Jesus do? Exactly. Love your neighbors, y'all. Love thy neighbor. Do not covet. Um, And also, wear your mask. Yes. Practice safe social distancing. Wash your hands. Yes. And stay iconic. Stay iconic, gal. Hopefully this audio works. Bye. Bye.